Hi there everyone, it's me Michael, your friendly neighborhood humble soccer soldier. So this is the first video I'm going to do for response videos. This video is directly um, in response to Norm McFarlane 6724. I say again, Norm McFarlane 6724. He's left a few comments. Uh, some of them might be a bit triggering for some people, so this is your first and only warning. Um, we're going to be discussing some sensitive topics. And uh, Norm, I, Norman, I want you to know I haven't ignored your comments. I just didn't have the ability, time, space, or headspace to make a fair comment back to it, so I figured I'd do it now. Uh, it's my goal in the next three-ish, four-ish weeks to catch up on all the comments, to leave the replies, and I'm going to try to do it in this format. It's a little bit more personal, so I will leave a video comment, and then I will leave a text comment. So please, anyone that left a comment, don't think I've forgotten about you or I've overlooked you. So you left a, a comment on my post-stroke anxiety video. You said, everything you've said I agree with, I suffer from anxiety that is, occasion that is occasionally off the scale. I live alone. The world wants nothing to do with me. I've had two strokes. I suffer from diabetes. I've had two open heart surgeries and stress and depression are constant companions. I go for days not communicating with anyone. I'm alone in the world and nothing has purpose. I'm dying through loneliness. Well, first off, I'm sorry. Right? And thank you for trusting me enough with sharing that information with me and, and some of the, just the state that you're in. And... I've only had one stroke. I've not had um, a heart attack or surgeries in that regard, nor do I have diabetes. But I do know what it is like to be alone, um, very significantly alone. And the best I can suggest, and I don't know where you live, so we're going to assume you live in Canada or in the United States, or potentially England, because English appears to be your first language. Uh, you can reach out to your local Lake Stroke Association or the Stroke Foundation or March of Dimes or the Red Cross or other service organizations that might be able to assist you with support groups. Uh, I would also suggest you go to your family doctor. Um, like I live in the province of Ontario in Canada, so if I went to my family doctor and asked for a referral to a psychiatrist or to some form of mental health support group, it would be covered by what's called OHIP, the Ontario Health Insurance Plan. Um, you may have an insurance plan uh, that covers that, even if on a sliding scale. So that would be my uh, best suggestion. Insofar as dying through loneliness, you've got to find some way to create contact with the world. Unfortunately, you're going to have to make a little bit of effort, and people are going to have to learn to meet you halfway some days and three quarters on the others. So I don't have any specific suggestions. Um, if you have the ability to, Maybe gaming online. You could uh, form some friendships through online gaming. If that's not uh, something you enjoy doing, there might be uh, some form of hobby that you could get into that does involve interacting with other people. That That's the best option I have here. Uh, the next one is going to be on a video uh, that was called um, Suicide After Stroke, My Own Journey. So that's a video where I expressed and explained uh, my journey after my stroke insofar as some of the difficulties I had and when I was actively suicidal that is so not right now uh, this video is being recorded on the 26th of August 2023 I am definitively speaking of a period um, in 2020 2021 so we're not talking now we're not talking even in the last 12 months so anybody I know personally that might be watching this video I'm good I'm solid if you want to reach me you know how to I've got a mobile phone give me a ring. We'll talk. If you don't have my mobile phone number, you probably have my email address. Um, and you know my personal email address, not my strokeassaulter at gmail.com email address. If you want to get in contact with me personally and you want to do it by email, strokeassaulter, all one word, at gmail.com. Or you can go to Instagram and strokeassaulter. And Twitter, which is now X, again, strokeassaulter. Look me up. I'm there. You'll find me. Um, so at that point, or leave a comment on a video, any video, this one specifically, if you wish. So my journey, uh, insofar as when I was actively suicidal and had to be what's called formed here in Ontario, in the UK, you'd call it sectioned. In the States, you, you might call it a civil commitment. Uh, I was in the hospital um, by medical order for uh, six days. Uh, at that point, my psychiatrist released me on a, what's called a treatment plan and a safety plan. So we're going to discuss some very um, sensitive information right now. So if that's not your bag, turn the video off now. Come back in about four minutes. Go make a tea. So your first comment was, I apologize. Or sorry, uh, your first comment was, I live with suicidal thoughts every day. 
I know how difficult that can be. Uh, and I understand how frustrating that can be. So I'm sorry that you live with those thoughts every day. Your next comment was, I apologize. I should have been more clear. I've had two strokes plus heart issues. So I know exactly what you're talking about. You're very courageous and thank you. Well, thank you for thinking I'm courageous. There's some days I don't feel all that courageous. I'll be just quite honest about it. Um, now, for those of you that have had or currently do live with suicidal thoughts every day, there's nothing really wrong with that per se, right? It's in some ways, it's a form of self-talk. However, when that self-talk turns into plans and, and gestures and behaviors, that's where you need to start reaching out. So for the YouTube censors out there, I am not advocating in any way, shape, kind, form, method or mechanism that suicide is an answer or a solution and should be sought out, nor am I counseling anyone to do that. What I'm trying to do is normalize the conversation around suicide. So yes, you may have suicidal thoughts every day. And I've been there personally where I've had experiences where I have thought of ending my life and, and various methods of doing that. Um, I have been hospitalized twice. Uh, once by my own voluntary admission because I was actively suicidal and once not by my own voluntary admission. It was... Um, I was, I'll be honest, I was taken to the hospital via the police um, under the Mental Health Act in the province of Ontario. I was not arrested. I was, they, their, it's their job to escort me to the hospital. Uh, they took me to the hospital. I was went voluntarily. I was not in handcuffs. The constables I dealt with from the Ontario Provincial Police Force or Police, police Service, sorry, were very professional. Um, the medical health uh, and mental health staff I dealt with at my local hospital were excellent. <clears throat> I met with, with my psychiatrist later that day on the secure mental health unit and we had a conversation what was about to happen and I had previously worked in a mental health hospital many years ago on an adolescent crisis and assessment unit so I knew what was happening. I was fully aware of what was going on. In fact, when he showed me the forms of what we call the form, he went, you've seen these before, I'm not going to read it to you <laughs> so because I knew exactly what it said. So living with a suicidal thought that, that happens. That's called suicidal ideation or thinking. Uh, what, is, what is not okay, what is not normal, is when that starts to become a ruminating event where you're constantly sort of circling the drain, so to speak, of having those thoughts constantly. And they're not just intrusive, they're almost a constant companion. When you start then committing to behaviors and committing to plans and, and having an active plan on how you intend to end your life. That is where you need to reach out to someone you trust, grab them in a firm, firm, all around bear hug grasp and beg, borrow, plead, steal yourself to help. Be that in a hospital, be that with a therapist, be that with um, a religious leader, be that with whomever, take yourself to help. Walk yourself into the nearest fire station and go, help me, please. Right? That doesn't matter how you get to help. It just matters that you get to help. Right? <clears throat> and then another video that you left to comment on would be, I should have died. Why a stroke sur survivor might say this. Your comment was, I'm 65. I've had two strokes. Thankfully, I've regained talking and walking. Thank you for opening up the fear related to this. Yeah, there is some fear, right? Um, because... Uh, some people do have difficulties relating to their new normal. And sometimes you'll have um, celebrities or people that are in show business. They will have um, a news story about a, uh, a physical health event they've had with some, some form of brain injury, be it a stroke or an aneurysm. They may have passed away or they may be facing a very serious um, rehabilitation and reintegration period. So it, it, it is, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, it is a significant thing for a stroke to su survivor to admit there are days where they felt they sh they should have died. Um, that is part of the grieving process. And again, saying I should have died needs to be investigated to make sure we're not going back to the previous conversation about the potential of ending your own life or that stroke survivor ending their own life because there is the, the definitive link of anxiety after stroke. There's a definitive link of depression after stroke, and that can definitively lead to that person feeling overwhelmed and potentially like they want to do something extremely drastic that 
would end their life. And, and I've been there. I've, I've completely been there. I know how difficult it can be. Um, and all I can say is this. It's, it's not an easy journey. Um, have I historically had periods where I was considering ending my life? Yes, that is totally 100% true. Uh, were there periods of my life where I was committing to planning? Oh yeah, I had a couple of really good plans. Um, I won't share any of that because that's not really germane to this conversation, nor would it be relevant, and it would just be completely scary to the people that I know. And, and I'm, that's not the intent of this video. Now, the intent of this video is just to support you, Norman McFarland. Right, uh, to provide you, like, let you know that I have read your comments, I have considered your comments, and I want you to know that I'm taking the time to respond to you. That you do have some support with me and the stroke folk here on the channel. So if anyone wishes to leave a comment in regards to Norm, or Norman, I'm sorry, I don't know you well enough to call you Norm, and, and if you even prefer to be called Norm. Uh, my name is Michael. I prefer to be called Michael. Some people don't call me Mike. Do not call me Mikey because of that damn life serial commercial in the 1970s. That's all I'm going to say about that. But there is support out there. Um, and I don't know what area you live in, but I, I know there is support for you. Um, so I know what it's like to be in a ruminating state of, of planning, right? In a ruminating state of making considerations, making deliberations. Um, the intrusive thoughts that just sort of show up and like, do this, go ahead and do it right here, right now, do it. Been there, right? So I, I know how difficult and I know what kind of struggle that can be. Do I know your specific situation? No, but just, just know this, right? If you get to a point where you definitely need help and unfortunately you're feeling extremely lonely and there is no one around you, Pick up your phone, dial 911 if you're in North America or 999 if you're in the UK, right? Tell the operator exactly where you're at. Just be honest with them and tell them, hey, listen, I need help. Here's the help I need and here's why I need that help. Um, you will have an ambulance show up. You might get firefighters depending where you live. You may get a police officer. You're just going to pick up the phone and ask for a wellness check. It's as simple as that. I need a wellness check. I'm not feeling well. I'm feeling of doing fill in the blank, whatever the case may be. And, and they will help you through it. The operator will stay on the phone with you until help physically arrives at your location. The paramedics, the police officers will then help you as best they can. And they will take you to the hospital where you will see a doctor and then the conversation can continue with there probably with a, a psychiatrist or what they call a hospitalist uh, both are doctors one is a specific doctor trained in, in psychiatry one is a doctor who's done like several extra rotations in education in psychiatry there'll probably be a crisis worker or a mental health worker which is a social worker and they can start help you getting the treatment um, that you need be that medication, be that uh, therapy. I, I'm, I'm currently on several medications for depression um, and, and mood stabilization. There's nothing wrong with having to take a medication. In fact, I'm, I'm on more medication for mood and, and depression than I am on because of my stroke. Like physically, like I'm no longer on a blood pressure medication. Uh, the only medication I take right now is, is the baby aspirin. <clears throat> Excuse me. So... Norman, I'm so sorry for what you're going through. I can't imagine how difficult it was having several strokes, having open heart surgery, having diabetes. All of those can lead to some major health complications, which, you know, can lead to some serious mental health complications. I just I hope you have the ability to see this video, and I hope you're still well, and you're still uh, doing what you need to do to support yourself. And if there's anything I can do to help you, uh, please reach out. You can either email me at strokeassalter at gmail.com. You can find me on Instagram, uh, again, at strokeassalter. Uh, or you can just leave a comment down below if you wish to. And Norman, please, go get the help you need. Now, if you like what you've been watching over the past five-ish years, please like, share, subscribe. If there's a comment or a, a um, content, sorry, that you'd like me to make, a video about please leave a comment down below or get in contact with me and if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you the signs and symptoms of a stroke that being someone who appears immediately be befuddled confused or has lost their sense of balance someone who has an eye and vision problems like they see in grayscale they can't see it of one eye they can't move their eyes they only see a little dot in the world 
uh, someone who has facial droop. There's a noticeable slackening of the facial muscles. Someone who can't raise their arms equally effectively or at all, right? Someone who uh, is having slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate speech. Um, they don't use the appropriate words for context. Uh, uh, someone who has the inability to stand unaided or support their own body weight, please place that person in a position of comfort. Immediately call 911. Something so simple can save a life.